Hello again, I am Blunty, and I just burned away a whole weekend doing pretty much nothing at all, except playing Pokemon Alpha Sapphire. I'm not even kidding, except for a meal break on Sunday, I played Pokemon from when I woke up to when I crashed out late that night. Pokemon Alpha Sapphire is fantastic. This isn't an exhaustive review by any means, and I'll be keeping it pretty free of spoilers, but I want to tell you a bit about why I think this is the very best Pokemon game Game Freak have bestowed upon us yet. Now then, Pokemon Alpha Sapphire, and of course its paired game, Pokemon Omega Ruby, are 3DS remakes of Pokemon Sapphire and Pokemon Ruby from 2002, released on the Game Boy Advance. Pokemon Auras, as it has been commonly abbreviated, sits on top of the same game engine that drove the fantastic Pokemon X and Y games from last year. So everything that was such a superb and welcome step forward in those games is here too, only with even more polish, refined features and a couple of new features. It looks and sounds fantastic. Because the world is rendered instead of being sprite based, you'll get shifting camera angles for dramatic effect in some dungeons or just to reveal certain overworld areas better. And yes, before we get too much further here, most of the game is in 2D, while the battle scenes and certain story scenes are in full on 3D. Though there is slightly more frequent use of the 3D in this game than there was on X and Y. I was playing on the new 3DS, which thanks to the superb new head tracking feature, as covered in my review, the 3D sections were even more enjoyable than ever. Although it has to be noted that the frame rate issues that existed in the battle scenes with 3D turned on in X and Y do still exist here, sometimes quite severely, so that's a little bit disappointing. There is a big fistful of small changes to some minor mechanics all over the game. I'm not going to dig into them all here, but there are two new features in particular I'd like to poke at. The first is the new Saw function. Once unlocked as part of the story progression, you get a special poker flute, which will then call forth Latius or Latios, and will allow you to quickly fly to any town. And usefully, what makes it different from the normal fly HM move we've always had to get from place to place quickly, it'll let you land directly on routes too, not just straight outside Pokemon centers. Plus, it looks freaking awesome, soaring far above the overworld, going wherever the hell you like. And in 3D, I might add. Another new feature, by far my favorite new mechanic in the game, is called the Dex Nav. Pulled up from the bottom screen, just like the PSS, Pokemon Ami, and Super Training features carried over from X and Y, and a full-time tracking world map, and the fun little news feed thingy. Oh, and of course, it has the same surprisingly solid online systems for battling, trading, and the lottery fun times of Wonder Trade. The DexNav does three very awesome things. The first is, it'll identify if there's a potentially special Pokemon nearby. Rather than relying on just random encounters while running through grass or whatever, now there's an additional mechanic where you can sneak up on these Pokemon. And the more successful you are in repeatedly doing this, the more special the Pokemon can be. Some of them will hold special items, some are of particularly high level for that area, and some, well, some come with special moves. Moves they can't learn naturally in the wild. Moves that you used to have to do some time-consuming and research-heavy breeding to obtain. One of the very first Pokemon I caught this way was a Puchina with Thunderfang, a wildly useful move for him, and he was very useful in my playthrough. And although I have not yet encountered this, I suspect this mechanic may also be a way to chain up encounters to increase the likelihood of shinies. That'd be interesting. DexNav will also track which Pokemon are in the current area, revealing the ones you've caught, showing light silhouettes of the ones you've seen but not caught, and vitally, even if you've not seen them yet, it tracks if you've caught all of the kinds of Pokemon possible in any given area. This makes catching them all much less random and much less reliant on you having a guide open on your phone or laptop or whatever, randomly stomping about and hoping to maybe run into a rarer Pokemon that someone told you might be in this area. Now you can know for certain, at a glance, and instantly, if you need to do more hunting to make sure you've got everything possible in that area. And here is the really cool bit. Once captured, you can then tap on the Pokemon you're after, 
and the Dex Nav will actively search out that specific wild Pokemon for you. So, if like me, for example, you're on a hunt for a Routes with Mean Look, a move normally you'd have to try and breed onto it, you can just keep chaining up the Routes specific encounters until you've kind of leveled up your search high enough to find one with the special move you're after. It took me only about 10 or 15 minutes to find the routes with mean look I was after rather than the, well, potentially hours of catching two different Pokemon with the right moves in the right sexes and then breeding them and then hatching all the eggs and then figuring out which, uh, you know, it's just so much easier to do it this way. It's a fantastic new mechanic. And outside of the mechanics of the game, the actual retelling of the Pokemon Sapphire story is very well done. Through a combination of more subtly woven story dialogue, through the use of facial expressions and body language that the new 3D character models allow, and through dramatic cinematic camera movements, the core story and the way it's told feels even more dramatic and engaging than it ever was. There have been changes, there's new characters, new plot lines and subtler motivations and even finer nuances of grey. These antagonist characters aren't the one-note evil guys that are only there to give you something to fight against. In fact, a couple of them are very likeable indeed, even fun. And their plans and hopes, while destructive, are more misguided than out-and-out insidiously villainous. Game Freak have been trying for many years now to make the villains in the Pokemon games more sympathetic and more understandable, more subtle than the basic kind of Team Rocket style gangsters under the mob boss like Giovanni. And here in Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby, I feel like they've at last completely succeeded in making antagonists that really are very enjoyable and more than just two-dimensional bad guys. No spoilers, but in the post-game, after you defeat the Elite Four, at least one old enemy becomes even more interesting, and it's fantastically awesome. I'm not going to tell you, but it's awesome. Secret bases make a return here too, though once little more than a novelty on Sapphire and Ruby, and never really revisited in any games that followed, in the remakes here, they've been made... more... You can find your own little cave or tree or bush to make your base in. Potential sites are scattered all over the world map. Some are obvious, some are hidden away in surprisingly inaccessible locations. There's even a special island full of nothing but holes to make your special bases in. Once selected though, you can start decorating with items gifted to you. Chairs and dolls and tables and thingies. All which are purchased or earned or gifted in various ways. But then you can be your own little mini Pokemon gym leader. Now other people, friends, PSS passers by and people you've otherwise connected with using the various online functions can find your base exactly as you've set it up in the location you've set it up in their own games. And of course you can find their secret bases in your game. Cool discovery, fun to explore, and several decorative items can be interacted with, which is also a bit of fun there. But you can also battle with the secret bases owner once a day. That's CPU controlled, not a live internet match, but you will earn experience and money and have a whole bunch of fun fighting against Pokemon that real people have trained up and selected movesets for. And this alone can make it very different and much more interesting than a lot of other of the battles you have with built-in NPC characters in the game. Secret base owners can even create a little team of friends they've run into who all hang out at the base so you can have several battles in any single base daily. You can add the bases as favourites so they stay in your game for you to revisit over and over again. You can ask the owners to be pals so they and their team feature as guests in your base for other people to fight. You may even set the kind of battle your secret base gym specializes in, single and double, etc. You can even share your secret bases directly via QR codes, which you can generate on command. In the originals, I never used my secret base. I set it up once when the game asked me to, but and I never even went back to it. But now, now I have plans. I'm enjoying setting it up, tweaking it. I'm loving discovering other people's secret bases in my world and battling them. I've had some surprisingly fantastic battles already with some of them. If you'd had asked me before this game came out if I'd be bothering with all this silly secret base stuff and decorating with little polka dolls and stuff, I'd have laughed at you. Don't be stupid. I don't care about that silly little useless gimmick. I'm interested in the main game. I'd have sneered. I'd have been wrong though. Very wrong. This is so much fun. Many old school Pokemon players may lament the often frustratingly tedious large water areas of the original Sapphire and Ruby games. 
and I'm one of them. It was tedious at times during the extensive surfing bits, but here, in the remakes, I had zero issues with it. They're still as big and expansive as ever, with lots of little nooks and crannies, and lots of swimming trainers, and little paths, and, and of course dive areas to item hunt and swim through seaweed trying to find Pokemon, but I feel like the wild encounter rate has been pulled back a bit, so you can actually move more than a few damn blocks now before another goddamn tentacle pops up on ya. Or as I call them, Zubats of the Sea. It's easier and faster to actually make progress over the water maps now. A very pleasant surprise, because I honestly was kind of mildly dreading those sections. I remembered how tedious they got, but they're, they're fun now. I'm actively choosing to go back there and explore just for fun, something I rarely did in the originals. In my first trek through the main story, which I wasn't rushing through, I took time to explore and hunt and capture and train. I had 36 hours game time on the clock by the time I beat the Elite Four. And even after that, there's a whole new story that opens up in the post-game. Plus, it unlocks even more new Pokémon in the already explored areas. The value that this game delivers is huge. Like I said at the start, I spent pretty much my entire weekend, Friday afternoon to Sunday 11pm, doing little else but playing Pokemon Sapphire, and I can honestly say, I was never bored once. I was absolutely hooked, I was never frustrated, never ever without something interesting to do. Pokemon Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby is, without question, the most refined and the most fun Pokemon game yet and my personal favourite so far. The story is strong, the NPC cast is strong and very enjoyable, the game is mechanically extremely solid with some fantastic new features that I love, and there's just a ton of stuff to keep you occupied beyond the core story and just, you know, catching Pokemon. I am not even close to being done with my post-main story plans in Alpha Sapphire. I'm expecting to hit 60 hours pretty easily before I feel okay with my current plans. But I'm already so much in love with this game, I have already purchased a copy of Amiga Ruby, ready to go through it all over again and try some new team combinations and such. If you are new to Pokemon, get this game. If you are a lapsed old schooler who wants to back in, but wants a game with Pokemon they'll actually recognize, get this game. And if, like me, you've played every generation since it began, holy hell, you are going to adore this game. Hopefully as much as I do. But you know that already, because you already bought it, didn't you? Because if you didn't, you're stupid. Go get it. Now, dude. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time. Probably. If I can tear myself away for this game long enough to make any more videos. <laughs>